Hello and welcome back in, to the channel, How We Move the Decimal. In today's video, I am doing part two of button sorting and photographing. I don't think I've actually gotten to photographing parts. Um, the first video was literally just sorting the buttons. This is a vintage lot of buttons. It was a four quart container that my mother got at a thrift store two years ago for $11. We lost it somewhere in our basement for a good six months of hard looking for it and then it just popped up. It's like the basement gods just spit it back out. I swear that happens. Like you can't find it, you can't find it, you can't find it and then all of a sudden you find something. So we did that and we found it and now we're able to photograph it and list it I will say this is the Monday after Easter. I am recording this and my listing has been crap for probably over a month. Just super busy, tired, lots of stuff going on. And April is very, very busy for us school-wise for our kids. I mean, I swear I say that every month. I'm like, this month's very busy, but all of the spring sports have started. We are in full swing. We have a musical. We have band we have 4-h we have everything going on right now this month so it's a little difficult a little hard pressed to find time to list and those of you that have been doing ebay for a long time know if you are not listing you are not selling i unlisted four items today that were going to end anyway and i clicked sell similar so hopefully that's helped the algorithm go and i'll make some more sales I'm trying to sort out these buttons into types of buttons, brands of buttons. I was doing the Mother of Pearl button lot there. That's what I was photographing. So I'm going through and photographing all of those. I did have a large lot of Mother of the Pearl buttons and I'm trying to do fronts and backs if at all possible. Remember, we can get 24 photos now per eBay listing, which is super nice. I'm also trying to keep the brands kind of sorted together as I'm taking the photos and I, these were just dress shirt mother of pearl buttons a lot of people will buy vintage buttons when making re, um, like recreations of vintage garments so they have the actual buttons that are vintage so that's very nice the with this this is just the first lot of many, and I want to say I had over 800 buttons total, and I think I did around 10 lots of the buttons, but none of them are listed yet. I am just photographing them. I What I do listing-wise is I will set aside a day or a weekend and photograph as much as possible because I have to photograph on my dining room table. I don't have like an allotted ebay room or area i've been watching a lot of ebayers that um do it out of like those little garages in their backyard or little like sheds in their backyard i wish i had a shed in my backyard not necessarily for ebay but i would love to put like my lawnmower and stuff somewhere so so we could like use our garage but we also have a lot of wild life in our area so i'm not sure how well that would work the I thought it was getting close to the bottom of my death pile. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. I need to see the error of my ways. These are more pearl buttons. These are black pearl buttons, black mother of the pearl buttons. So they also get their own lot. I'm writing down and photographing the lots as I take them. So I'll write it on a piece of paper, post a note here, take it. And that post a note will then also go into the bag that I'm putting the buttons in. So how I'm storing and sorting the buttons, that's where the piece of paper would go in. It works out very nicely. I do the same thing with vintage slides when I photograph them. I just make sure to get a photograph of everything as it goes in together. The I really like the buttons that are like the vintage buttons on the old cardboard, on the vintage cardboard. Those It's nice. It helps me like know what they are. but a lot of the really, really old buttons didn't have cardboard, which makes life a little more difficult. The next lot, I'm gonna do the La Petite buttons. A lot of these were actually from the 70s. Some were from the 50s. These were the Bakelite buttons. So some of them were Bakelite, which is a specific plastic polymer. I used a um, polish, to figure out what ones were Bakelite and what ones weren't. 
They were not all Bakelite. I just listed them as a large lot. The Some of these buttons are also from the 90s. So 70s to 90s, I just wanted to do this brand. I decided to do a large size of them so I could, um, you know, put them in a pile as like the cover photo. It's like, look at how many, you know, have this here. The, with these, this is, you know, I haven't listed anything from that we've gotten from the bins yet. And I still had all of these in my basement, in my death pile. So it's been interesting and I'm trying to move through my death pile, but again, I'm not listing anything. I'm so overwhelmed right now with everything going on, which I think is why I could never be a full-time eBayer. One, I don't think I have the availability of inventory. I'm not going to buy overstocks. I'm not going to buy new from Amazon stuff. I prefer to find vintage things and that's, you know, one-offs here, one-offs there. The chances of me ever finding a large lot of vintage buttons, again, is very slim. The So, like, I'm doing all this research and stuff and I may never use this research ever again. However, I thought the same thing about slides, and after doing a bunch of research and stuff, I ended up using that information again. Now, what's going to drive me crazy later on is I find more La Petite buttons that I didn't have. Like, I thought I would got them all. I did not. So later on, as I'm going through the box, I'm like, ah, crap. <laughs> I found more La Petite buttons, which is unfortunate, but it, it is what it is. I ended up just putting those ones, extra ones, in a large lot altogether. I'm counting how many cardboards I have. Not the amount of buttons, but the amount of cards. Just looking at that, I had several, you know, just this lot probably is close to, um, I had 27 cards with three on average on each card. So I'm looking close to 90 buttons just in this lot. So I do have a lot, a lot of buttons the, to deal with. And it's, it's not horrible, but it was just easier for me to count cards than count buttons. But I want also when they look in my description and look at my photos, they know what they're getting. And I will take that and I'll put it in the bag with the storage. Also, with this, the I need to find a way to categorize them and store them. Um, right now, they're just going to go back in the button box, and that's great. But once I sell them, fingers crossed, it'll be more. These buttons are hard because there's different on each back. So I'm going through and writing how many buttons on each card, which is so monotonous. But these are also the really, really vintage pearl buttons that... Um, came off old vintage clothing that being said if you ever get really really old vintage clothing that is just torn apart take the buttons always take the buttons off of it uh, same with Levi's jeans take the buttons I've taken pockets I've taken um, the Levi's leather tags uh, you can just like you can dismember electronics for parts you can dismember clothing for parts especially vintage clothing buttons always do very well if it's name brand those buttons will do well if there's you know the name of the company on the button dismantle it always think of things that way so if there's like i don't know a chanel shirt or something take the buttons if it's if the shirt is ripped to shreds take the buttons the same with um cashmere if cashmere is ripped to shreds has moths just ate it, sell it as by weight, as a crafter lot. There is value in it. So I, again, I'm writing down all of these buttons and it's taking a hundred years and I legit have to use a calculator because I cannot count on my fingers how many buttons are in this lot. So that's fun and humbling all at the same time. I mean, I'm tired and I'm probably talking to a kid also in the background and something is going on behind me. Someone's playing on the Xbox. This is constant, constant noise in my house, which is just amazing. So 
I do have to use a calculator to go all these. Some of these have the old price tags on them, some of them don't. The, and this is me calculating all of the buttons. There's 220 vintage white buttons. Again, this is just the, what I use when I'm photographing it, what I'll use when I'm making the title. So I have all of it there. I'm gonna take a picture of the stack for the front picture of my listing. And now I have to put them all in a bag and photograph all of them still. I wish these had more details on them from the lady that had them. I guess she used them to sell somewhere uh, because there are prices on here, but I don't know where she used to sell. I don't know what part of it was for. All I know is maybe she died, I guess. I have all of her buttons. And isn't that just the morbid truth about all of us that thrift and resell things that we buy at estate sales and stuff? A lot of the times the person has passed away and, you know, what if this button collection was one of her favorite things and her kids give zero Fs about the button collection and get rid of it? The, I think the whole like Swedish death cleaning or something is about that, the you don't want to leave behind things that other people have to deal with, but, and then we all get to take advantage of it as thrifters and as resellers. The, like I've said in previous posts, I'm not going to find like really good name brand clothing here. I'm not going to find a lot of high end objects, but I will find vintage. I will find antiques. I will find vintage in my area. My area is transitioning from old to young, like neighborhoods do. When we think about it sociologically, our, my neighborhood was an older aging neighborhood. We were one of the first families in our part of the area to come move back. So a lot of children are moving back with their children. We're transitioning to a younger neighborhood and those older individuals are moving either to nursing homes or they are passing away. So we're seeing a pretty decent transition in our area. And with that transition comes estate sales, comes rummage sales, comes people donating things, asking to get rid of them, comes posts on Facebook marketplace to get rid of things. The and then we come by, you know, we come across them and we buy them. I'm going to list this lot of buttons as a lot. They're all the same. They were all together with uh, clothespins, or not clothespins, like, not bobby pins, safety pins. The There's a lot of really tiny, tiny blue vintage safety pins holding some of these buttons on, which is kind of cool. It's hard to get a good picture of these, but I don't want to open the package just to get a good picture. These are black beaded buttons. I'm going to take good pictures of the tag on them and try to get as good as I can pictures, but they are older. The clear plastic has clouded. I was very pleased that these did not smell like cigarette smoke. I was worried with a lot of vintage items, they smell like mothballs or cigarette smoke or something that is unpleasant and hard to get rid of. Granted, these have been in my house for two plus years, hiding somewhere in the never ending basement or garage or wherever. I have a feeling that they moved around a lot either on their own or by the goblins that live in my basement. The I think a lot of my items move and they find new homes and I have to like move them around myself. The I'm now going and trying to sort by um, brand again. I'm going to go with La Mode this time and pull them all out. Again, This I, I have to go through these several times because there are so many of them and trying to find the brands of them all together. La Petite was the largest brand I had. La Mode is another one. La Chic is another one. And Lansing, I think, are the ones I end up putting all together later on because, again, by brand. And then whatever was extra or whatever I found later on, I end up just lotting all together as one large lot. 
That being said, if these don't sell in like a year or maybe two years, I will just lot all of the buttons together in one large lot to get rid of. So I'm putting in the work now and I may end up undoing everything. So whatever doesn't sell will get put in one very large lot to sell in a couple years. And I've done that before with other items, threads, um, fabrics, stuff like that. I will just lot them all together in one giant lot, the ones that don't sell and they tend to sell. So thank you for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.